Hello everyone, my name is Sean Kennedy and welcome to this Blender Cookie tutorial on 2D tracking for compositing. Today we're going to take a look at tracking and how it can be applied in a 2D sense only, not for camera solving, which is the traditional way uh, it's been used in Blender. Um, if you're not familiar with tracking, what tracking is, is it's analyzing the motion of a live action plate or a piece of footage. Uh, you could then take that data and apply it in a multitude of ways. You could do things like uh, putting in lens flares or putting matte painted elements into a shot or uh, you know replacing a monitor something like that um, it's one of the core things you can learn in compositing I've been doing this for a long time on a lot of feature films and tracking is something we would literally do every single day of our working lives let's uh, let's take a look at some examples before we really get into it first uh, so I can talk about the different kinds of tracking that we're gonna be looking at so the first kind is a single point track and what that means is uh, you're just tracking one single thing and using that data. So here all I've done is track the wall and stuck the Blender Cookie logo on it. Uh, this looks like a 3D shot. There's something here in the foreground, something in the background, but you can see there's no parallax between the two. There's no movement uh, separating the foreground from the background, which means that the camera was just on a tripod moving around. Uh, if it had been handheld, there'd be some sort of movement between the foreground and background objects, which to put something into that shot you'd have to do a 3D solve um, but in this case the camera was on a tripod it was a very simple shot so a single track uh, was plenty another thing is uh, lens flares like I think I believe I have a lens flare demo yeah lens flares are a very simple one point track um, you know they're not even though this is a totally handheld shot something like a lens flare is not based on parallax and based on all that kind of stuff so a single point track generally works for that kind of thing. Um, there's also what's called a two point track, which will also bring rotation and scale into the mix as well. So here you can see I've thrown a planet very close to our own, uh, you know, just outside the atmosphere there on the horizon. So this is a crazy handheld shot, but by tracking the scale and rotation along with the position, it was a very easy matter just to get this planet uh, stuck in the sky. And you can do full sky replacements. You could put, uh, if this was a city, you could put background buildings in like this. Uh, all The possibilities are limited only by your imagination. There's another kind you can do, which is a four-point track, which is also called a corner pin. And here I've just uh, replaced one of these posters. This is Warner Brothers Studios. And uh, I've replaced one of the posters with this wonderful tracking movie. Um, there's actually some very new tools inside of Blender that we're going to take a look at uh, for corner pinning specifically. We're also going to take a look at the old way of corner pinning because there's a few things you can do with that that you can't yet do with uh, the corner pin, the new corner pin tools. So there's a lot of other things we can use tracking for as well. Uh, one example would be to stabilize a shot. If I wanted to remove the motion from this shot, I could very easily track a point and then use the inverse of that data to cancel out this motion. Um, you can also use it for rotoscoping to assist with rotoscoping tasks, which are notoriously tedious work. So uh, let me show you. Actually, I have a demo of that to show. Um, if I open this up, here you can see I've got a little rotoscope in here. Rotoscoping is a topic for another tutorial. Hopefully, if there's uh, if there's interest in that, I'd love to go over one. Uh, I'd love to go over rotoscoping in detail. But here you can see I've. Uh, I've got this mask here and I've put literally no keyframes on this mask yet it's moving with this handheld footage and all I did was parent it to this track and uh, and it's completely done so now I can take this mask into the compositor and I can color correct this roof or do other adjustments anything else I wanted to do to it I've got it isolated now and it was very easily even though it's a handheld shot and traditionally without tracking you'd have to keyframe all these positions for this mask by hand and that just takes forever so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how tracking works. 